Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to do a follow-up problem to the previous problems that I've done. Uh, in the previous videos, I have uh, solved for what the electric field is at the center of a rod right here. The charge of the rod is uh, equal to 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, right? And then I put another charge here, uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, and I found the force of this uh, rod on that uh, charge. Right, which is also to say the same thing as we found the electric field because the force on this charge is simply the electric field times the charge of that charge, right? So then uh, this one was 0 0.6 meters, 0.6 meters. The length of the rod was uh, one meter. And uh, then we did a uniform charged rod. This one was uniform rod. We found that the force of the, the, this rod on that charge was equal to 0.345 newtons for uniform uh, charged rod, right? And then I did the charged rod that was non-uniform uh, and its density was varying as uh, kappa absolute value of x. That means at the middle of the rod, the, uh, the I put the origin of the rod in the I put the origin at the middle of the rod. So at the middle of the rod, the charge density was zero, and then it was growing linearly this way and this way, right? So the K absolute value of X means that. So the most of the charge was concentrated at the right end and at the left end of the rod. And then in the middle, there was no charge. And then we found that the electric field of that, uh, the electric force of that on the middle charge was equal to uh, the magnitude was 0 0.300 newtons, right? So it should be less because more of the charge is at the end, which is farther away from this charge, right? And m there's more cancellation happening, right? So the, the force due to these, and these are stronger charges, the force due to those are canceling more, whereas in the middle, it's adding up more, right? So this force should be less than that. So now what I should, what I want to ask is, what if this charge was not in the middle and it was off to the side? Let's say it was over here or it was over here, somewhere else. How would, you, how would we find the electrical field if it was somewhere else? So let's put these results, 0.345 newtons and 0.300 newtons, <coughs> all right? And uh, let's put that on the side. And then this is for uh, lambda is kappa absolute value of x, and this is for uniform rod. Okay, so then let's put this for the uniform rod. I can, um, let's say the object is here somewhere to the side. For the uniform rod, I could put the, the origin of the x-axis anywhere that I want. Since the, the density of the rod is the same, I can put it in the middle and I can put it on the left side. So for me, for the uniform rod, it's probably better to put it on the left side, okay? So then I'm going to say, well, what is the electrical force of this? This is going to be six microcoulombs, and then this one is going to be one zero, zero zero, right? What's going to be the force of this on another charge? And that charge is going to be three microcoulombs again, right? So then what's going to be the force of that? And then the answer we get should be, of course, less than 0.345 and it should be at an angle, right? So how do we do that? Well, we take a piece here, uh, dq, and we say the dq is gonna exert a force on it, a df, right? Uh, so then, uh, then we take all of those forces and we add them up. But what we have to do is we have to take the x component and do it separately, and then do the y component separately, right? Since there's no cancellation here, we're not in the middle of the rod for there to be cancellation. Right, so we can say here dfx is equal to df, and then this is, uh, we define this here as uh, theta, so then it's going to be df cosine theta, right, and then df is going to be what? The charge of this guy, kdq, times the, the little charge here, q, right? So, the, four, the only difference between finding force and finding electric field is that you have this extra little Q here that you have to multiply with. So once you know how to find force, once you know how to find electric field, you can do the other one, right? Then you divide that by R squared cosine of theta, 
Okay, so then you're gonna say here, uh, K, DQ is gonna be lambda DX, and then you're gonna have the little Q. Okay, and then the R squared, well, how do we define R squared? This is the R right here, okay? So let's say the position of this uh, object is, uh, let's say it's to the same distance that it was before, before, because before we were in the middle of the rod and we were uh, 0.6 meters from the, uh, the rod, right? So this one I'll make it to the side. So two, me two meters means it's one meter from the side of the rod, right? Like this. And then the vertical position will make it the same, 0.6 meters. Right? So then we can compare that force to the force on this charge. Okay? So then we can say here, what is R? Well, the distance from here to here is X. Right? That distance is defined as X. So then this distance is going to be what? Then that's going to be 2 minus X. Right? So 2 minus X, that's that quantity. And then, of course, this is 0. 0.6. So then R squared is going to be what? 2 minus x squared plus 0.6 squared, right? 2 minus x squared plus 0.6 squared. <coughs> okay? And that's going to be r squared. Then you have here k, q, and then dq is lambda dx. And then cosine of theta is going to be what? The cosine of theta is going to be cosine of this angle. So then you're doing cosine of uh, this angle. So then you're going to do 2 minus x divided by r. So 2 minus x divided by r which is going to be square root of this so basically you're adding another one of these to the one half power so then it's going to be three halves power right so then you're going to integrate this the force x then you're going to have here kq well we can pull all the constants out of the integral k q lambda those are all constants okay and then we can just do this on the ti calculator the, in, the integral comes out to be uh, 0.378579, right? And then, of course, k is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th, right? And then q is going to be the 3 times 10 to the minus 6, right? And then what's lambda? Well, if uh, since in this case this is uniform, this is going to be the charge divided by the length. Right, so it's going to be the charge of this uh, rod, which is 6 times 10 to the minus 6, and then divided by the length, which is 1 meter, right? So we take our answer, we multiply that by uh, 0 0.613 newtons. So that's the force on this charge in the x direction, fx. Then we do the same thing for fy. What's the difference for fy? We're going to put here sine theta, sine theta. And then when you do sine theta, you're going to get sine of this angle, which is going to be 0.6 divided by r, right? So instead of 2 minus x, we just have 0 0.6. 0 0.6. And then this one, you don't have 2 minus x anymore, but instead you have 0 0.6 over here. What we could do is just put 0 0.6 in the integral, right? And then just reintegrate it, but just change the integral. Instead of 2 minus x on the top, you just have 0 0.6 on the top. 6, 7, 2, 2, 2. So it's smaller. Right, so the Fy is going to be smaller than the Fx, right? So then we're going to say, just multiply it by all of these, those don't change. So you multiply it by 6, right? So then, of course, to get the total magnitude of the force, you do this squared plus that squared square root, and then you can get even the direction of the force. So Fx and Fy, whatever that direction is, right? What we essentially found is the direction of the electric field at that location, too, because what happens rods like that create electrical field like this All right it goes out like this straight and then to, uh, around the edges the electrical field bends you see like that so the electrical force we found was sort of in this location right so then the direction of the electric force and the direction of the electric field is the same. So then the direction of the electrical field we found out to be uh, 23.8 degrees, you see? So that's exactly what's going to happen. We found out its magnitude and we found out its direction, right? So what would we do if the, in the case of the non-uniform rod, okay? A couple things would change, of course. Uh, well, 
the first thing that you have to do when you have the non-uniform rod is you have to say whenever the non-uniform density is given with respect to what point is it given? What's the x uh, measured from? Well, in that case, the x was measured from the middle of the rod and the charge of the rod was increasing this way and increasing this way. The middle of the rod was defined as the, the origin from which to measure the x, right? So now we have to put the origin in the middle and then this is 0 0.50, negative 0 0.50, right? That's the, the two ends of the rod because the rod is one meter long. And then the position of that point is going to be what? Well, that point was in two meters from the end, right? Two meters from the end. So that was one and one meter. So then it's going to be one and a half. So the position of the rod will not, the position of that point will be 1.5 and 0.6. Right? So if it's 2 meters from the left end, it would be 1.5 meters from the middle, right? and it would be 0.6 meters from the, the, the vertical position. Right? So then uh, we take a piece again, and we say, okay, that piece is going to uh, have a force on it, right? D, uh, DF, and then break that into X component again, DFX. Right? So this is theta. So then the distance from here to here is going to be x, and then the distance from here to here is going to be one and a half. So this distance is going to be 1.5 uh, minus x, whereas this distance is going to be 0.6. Okay? So then let's do, go through the steps again. Df uh, is x is equal to df cosine theta. Okay? And then df is equal to k dq little q over r squared cosine theta, right? So where is the difference here? What happens? Well, then the dq you say is lambda dx, right? The lambda dx. So the little q just comes out. Then we have here lambda dx over, and then the r squared is going to be 1.5 minus x squared plus 0.6 squared, okay? And then cosine of theta is going to be 1.5 minus x, okay, <clears throat> divided by another one of those, so you have 1.5 minus x, then this is going to be 3 halves power. Then the other difference is now going to be lambda, you're going to put kappa x, right? So kappa x, so then you're going to have your <clears throat> dfx is going to be kq, lambda is equal to kappa, and then x, then we have 1.5 minus x dx over 1.5 minus x squared plus 0.6 squared to the 3 halves power. Then you can integrate that. These things are constants, right? You can pull out of the integral. And then now we can find out, we can do another integral to find out what the kappa is. We can integrate along the charge of the rod, right? Uh, so then we can integrate this from negative 0.5 to 0.5. You see? So this will give us the force in the x direction, the force in the x direction, right? Okay, so let's go in there and reintegrate this, change a couple things on our integral. Then we have to multiply it by k, q, and kappa. Well, what is kappa? Well, for the kappa, we have to do an integral for the charge, right? So the charge is going to be, q is going to be integral lambda dx from negative 0.5 to 0.5. So then we have here lambda is kappa x from negative 0.5 to 0.5. So then we're just going to integrate from 0 to 0.5 and double it, right? Because it's absolute value of x. So then you go 0 to 0.5 x dx. So then you have here q is equal to 2 kappa. The integral of that is x squared over 2, 0 to 0.5, right? So then um, the 2 and this 2 cancels. Then you have kappa 0.5 squared, right? And then if you put 0, you just get 0. That's equal to q. So then kappa is going to be q divided by 0.5 squared. Okay? So we replace this by that. So then we can put in all the values. k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. q was equal to 3 times 10 to the minus 6. And then the kappa is equal to the big Q, which was 6 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by 0.5 squared. Okay? So I take my integral, 0.0331, okay? the force in the x direction, 
due to that non-uniform charge rod, right? And then if, if I want to do the Y direction, so all I do is change this to sine of theta, right? And then the only difference is that this becomes now 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Everything else stays the same. The integral becomes X 0.6. So I just change the X. So X times 0 0.6 DX over this whole thing. Okay, this part remains the same. I don't have to reintegrate to find kappa because I've already done that integral. So I just three six eight. Notice the fy always comes out smaller, right? So point zero two three six eight. Then I multiply it by um, I multiply it by six. I multiply it by three. So then of course I'm going to do this squared plus that squared is a square root to find the total force. And then I'm going to do tangent inverse of this over this to find the angle, right? Point six degrees. So it's actually a higher angle, okay? Where the other one I remember was something like 20, 20 something degrees, 23 degrees. Why is the angle higher? That kind of also makes sense because the ends of the charge, the ends of the rod are stronger charge, right? The electrical field here is gonna be straight up like this and they're not gonna bend that quickly because the charge is so strong. So it's gonna go like this and then start bending away start bending away and then start bending away, right? So at the point of interest here, the field is gonna look a little bit more the higher angle. Whereas when it was more uniform charge, right? When it was more uniform charge, it was distributed throughout the rod, it's probably gonna look more like this. Like this, like this, and like this. Like that. You see how this one was like 20 something degrees? So the bending is quicker when the charge is distributed uniformly throughout the rod. But if there's more charge here, then it comes out kind of more straight and then starts bending, right? So then the angle is higher, that makes sense. So now you can see how to do the force and how to do the electrical field when the, when the point is not at the center, when you can't use symmetry anymore, you have to find Fx and Fy separately but the rest of the steps are similar to how you would do the middle of the rod, right? So you could do uniform rods and non-uniform rods this way, okay? Thank you very much.